He who hates inflated pride and the empty boast of the windbag. He heard their singing as if the victory were theirs for the taking. And he brought down his thunder on their glittering host. Struck them with lightning and sent them flying. Swore them and burned them and left them dying. Down like a rock from the mountain crest he came, thundering to earth. The flame dashed from his hand. The son of Thebes, whose best hope of fame was to conquer his native land, and who failed in his quest. For the war god gave us his word of command. Like a battle chariot, his terrible name ran them down where they stood, and they died in in the the dust. dust. Now at each of our seven gates, a Theban defender waits. As seven champions bring their fame and armor to the fight. And before the coming of night, six have put their fame to the test. Six have laid both fame and armor to rest as a tribute at great Zeus' feet. At the seventh gate, two brothers meet, sharing their blood in death as in birth. Each striking striking together, together. each laying the other dead on the the earth. Why has he called us here to debate an emergency session? His new proclamation, so vital to the state. Senators, our country, like a ship at sea, has survived the hurricane. The gods who sent it have navigated us into calmer waters now. I have chosen to summon this assembly because I know I can trust you. Your predecessors were loyal and reliable in King Laius' time. And when King Oedipus, in his exceptional wisdom, restored the fortunes of this city, when tragedy struck him and his rule was ended, your loyalty to the blood royal was never questioned, and you supported his sons till they too were brought down in a single day, incestuously murdered, each brother shedding a brother's blood. By that same blood right, as next of kin, I claim the throne as my inheritance, both the city and the kingdom. I claim it, and I hold it from today as mine by right. There is no certain measure of a man's quality, the depth of his intellect, or the maturity of his judgment, until he is put to the supreme test by the exercise of absolute power in the state. My own opinion is well known. The ruler who fears the consequences of his actions or who is afraid to act openly or 
take the good advice of his senators is beneath contempt. Equally contemptible is the man who puts the interests of his friends or his relations before his country. There is nothing good can be said of him. Let me make it plain before the gods, whose eyes are in every council chamber. When I see any threat to this nation, from whatever direction, I shall make it public. No one who is an enemy of the state shall ever be any friend of mine. The state, the fatherland, is everything to us. The ship we all sail in. If she sinks, we all drown, and friendship drowns with us. That's my policy. A policy of service to the Commonwealth. And in pursuance of that policy, I have issued an official state decree concerning the sons of Oedipus. Eteocles, who died fighting for his country and with exceptional bravery. We shall bury him with all the honors and funeral ceremonies customary for a man who died a hero. The other, the outcast, the exile, his brother Polynices who returned here at the head of a foreign army to destroy his homeland, burn down this city and reduce the people to a condition of slavery or kill them in the streets. I have ordered that he is to have no grave at all. No one is to bury him or mourn for him. His body is to be left in the open, uncovered, a stinking feast for the scavengers, dogs and crows, a sight to inspire terror. I intend to make it quite plain that never... Under my administration, will people who commit crimes against the state reap any benefits from their actions? And at the expense of honest, decent citizens, too. The people who serve the state, alive or dead, that makes no difference. I shall honor them. And reward them, too. Son of Monoikius, you are king now. You have delivered your verdict and sentence upon the man who defended the city. And the man who attacked it, unambiguously. Your least word has the force of law, and it binds the dead as well as the living. We are all at your disposal. Make sure, then, that my orders are carried out. Younger men than us should implement your policies. <laughs> I don't mean that. Polynices' body is already under guard. What else must we do? What other responsibility do you lay upon us? Not to intrigue with dissidents or subversive elements. We are not mad, sir. We know the law and the penalty for breaking it. Which will be death. And be in no doubt I shall enforce it. Because there are always men who can be bought, who will risk anything, even death, if the bribe is large enough. <coughs> My Lord Crayon! Oh, sir. Oh, I can hardly speak for lack of breath. Oh, not because I ran. I kept on stopping, as a matter of fact, half a dozen times. And I hung about as much as I dared. I haven't thought about anything so much for a long time. Listen, don't hurry, I said to myself. Chances are, dimwit, you're hurrying to the firing squad. <laughs> but then I said to myself, you see, hang about, I said, or rather don't, because if Creon hears this from somebody else, you're really in trouble. So I hurried here as slow as I could, if you see what I mean. <laughs> it's funny how long a mile can take you when you're thinking what I was thinking. <laughs> However, duty called in the end, and I reckoned it would be safer to face it out. He may be unimportant, but I've come here, so now I'll tell you. If I'm punished for it, the gods will be behind it, that's for sure. So I wouldn't have escaped it anyway. No sense, man. Why are you frightened? Well, first of all, sir, for myself, like, my own point of view, I'd never done it, and I didn't see who else done it, neither, so I shouldn't be punished for it, should I? Any need for all this preamble? You take great care to dissociate yourself from what you say? It must be bad news. It is bad news, sir, I'm afraid. I don't know how to put it for the best. The plainest way, and then we can have done with you. Straight out with it, then. <laughs> the... The body's buried. Well, someone or other, a handful of dust, that's all dry dust. But probably sprinkled, you know, religiously, and then gone, whoever it was. Do you know what you're saying? Who has dared to disobey my orders? No way of knowing, sir. We've no idea. There'd been no digging, no spade marks 